You watching the video right now, you, raise your hand if you're as big as Fuad, Ian, or James. Raise it high so I can see it. Coach Greg, and today I'm going to answer the question. Why did superstar IFBB Pro Ian Blair really drop me as his coach? So it seems a lot of people have been asking this. I watched Chase Iron's video talking about why he dropped me. A lot of speculation, what happened. I'm going to give you the story, I'm going to talk about it. Ian Valer, James, and Fuad, they were on the podcast with Fuad. Fuad has a channel, a lot of people are watching them. So Ian went on that channel and they discussed me and why he might have dropped me and why not. So I coached Ian back in the day when he was an amateur to three straight overall victories, including the amateur Olympia where he turned pro. He won overall, turned pro at every show. Undefeated with me coaching him, okay? Then after that, he ended up switching coaches. He went to Dennis James, okay? And this is what he said. He's like, Greg, I got a new sponsor. Dennis James is sponsored by this guy. And I'm like, and I know him a bit now and I'm working with him. And I'm going to go with him and he's going to help me and coach me from now on. I'm like, cool, good luck. No remorse, no bad blood, no nothing. Just awesome, do it. Now think about this. Ian was, maybe he was 22. I don't know how old he was. He was 22 or 23 years old. And he turned pro. And he had a lot of potential, obviously. When he first hired me, he sent me some pictures. And I'm like, okay, off season. I think he was 13 weeks out. And I looked at this guy. And I'm like, oh, that's not bad. He's in decent shape. He's not like fat. He's like in decent shape. He looked pretty good. Then the weeks go by. Progress photos are coming in. And by six weeks out, I'm like, Oh my goodness, you're gonna win overall for sure. This is crazy, I can't believe what I'm seeing. He's adding muscle and getting leaner. And of course he won overall, it wasn't even close. He could have won overall at six weeks out. He was shredded, his shredded glutes, everything was red. Then the next show, what do you think happened? The same thing, he looked ridiculous, he was always ridiculous. Amateur Olympia, let's do it. Gone in, pro. Overall, he's pro now. So did my coaching, was it not effective? I don't know, I guess maybe it wasn't effective, but he won. I always say it's not really the coach that makes you awesome, it's the athlete that makes the coach awesome. Ian made me look good as a coach because Ian is that good. And guess what? He sticks to the diet and he trains his ass off he doesn't complain and he puts in the work and there's the results. He has the great genetics to back it up, okay? If you have the great genetics and you do all those other things, that's how you're going to be successful. Did he eat popcorn on a diet? Yup. I get his progress report. I'm like, man, you're so ripped. You can eat two extra bags of popcorn today. He was eating from my diet plan, the same diet. Ask him yourself. Do you think that Coach Greg only had these meals now? Or do you think I've been eating this way for a long freaking time, as in years, decades, in fact? Then he had the opportunity. Yes, that's right. Opportunity to work with Dennis James. Who is Dennis James? He's a multi-Olympia competitor. As in, he competes in the Mr. Olympia many, 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 many times. Who is Coach Greg in comparison? Coach Greg, some guy. Did anyone know who I was? A few. I was pretty strong in the bench press. I could deadlift a fair bit. I was a decent bodybuilder for my size, for my height. I was all right. Dennis James was a multi-time Olympia competitor. Now ask yourself this. If you had a coach who just turned pro and he was okay, some superstar coach Say, hey, I'll go to train you now. I'm going to coach you. A famous guy, I don't know who, Ian had the chance to work with one of these guys. So why not take it? I'd already coached him for three shows. Already taught him pretty much everything I already knew. Why wouldn't he know that? It's a year. If I can't teach somebody everything I know in a year, what the heck good am I? So Ian was able to learn all this stuff from me, and then he gets another coach and learns from them. And let me ask you this, is he still working with the same coach, or has he progressed to different coaches and learned from each of them? How many people do you know only have been coached by one coach their entire life? It doesn't even matter which sport, basketball, hockey? Does everyone have the same coach forever? I've coached many other different people. I coached Johnny Shreve when he was amateur for years. And then he switched to different coaches. I even coached Brandon Harding. Remember that guy? We gained about, I think it was 10 or 15 pounds of muscle and he wasn't getting fat in the off season. 
That's just an example of somebody who was gaining muscle with me coaching them. If you don't believe me, Brandon hated me as a coach. Remember the videos we did together? Brandon and I had a controversy. He hated me coaching him. But what were the results? What were the results? He was even posting how much muscle he gained. He got way better. So for, first of all, Chase Irons has literally posted, I think, almost 10 videos about me so far. So he's obviously a fan, but what I do know is he likes to bulk. And when you like to bulk, you like to find people that promote bulking, like what? Everybody tends to do that, okay? Not faulting anyone for doing that. I probably even do that as a subconscious bias. I believe in not bulking and getting fat in the off season. So I probably go and read articles that support what I believe, I'm bound to. So let's watch Fuad's video at about an hour and a half. That's right, you gotta watch an hour and a half to get to the good stuff where they talk about me. When we get boners, we think we wanna have sex. When we get boners and sex? <laughs> what? I get boners very frequently. Holy f Man, James, you are too much for me, man. So I've heard the F word twice, boners twice, and sex a few times in 12 seconds. What do you think of Greg Doucette and his methods of bulking, of not bulking? I think and this I don't, is misconstrued I, as well. Though. It's not. I watched the whole video and it drove me insane. Fuad preaches you have to bulk and force feed to get bigger. But Fuad has abs and is ripped all the time. Even his off season, you look at Fuad and he looks great. He is not getting fat. Coach Greg says don't freaking get fat in the off season. I do not say to stay at five, six, seven single digit body fat year round. I say to people, be comfortable, don't get fat, eat enough to have a lot of energy in the gym so you're not starving and you can train harder than last time. But Fuad doesn't understand that because it's extremely difficult to understand what I'm saying. Because Fuad thinks that I'm saying don't gain any weight. I'll be 100%. I worked with Greg, and this is why I stopped working with Greg. I know you did. Once, and this is, this once is I my... turned pro, I knew I needed to be bigger, and I was just like, Greg is not going to be the guy to get me bigger. The hidden message also in here that nobody is talking about, even in this video, is the use of PDs. Was Coach Greg as big of an expert on PD use as Dennis James, who's competed in the Mr. Olympia as a super freaking heavyweight bodybuilder, massive... Or would Coach Greg know more about the secret substances that the hugest pros in the world take? I would bet most people that would assume that Dennis James would know more than me. Why wouldn't he? Am I saying I know more than him? Nope. Not even saying that. But I'm saying nobody is talking about the elephant in the room being PD use. Does Ian believe that I knew as much as I should know? I don't know. Was my doses mega high? Nope. Do I care about your health? Yep. Do most pro bodybuilders really feel that their health is of utmost importance? Or is getting bigger than last time more important? Pretty obvious most 5B pro bodybuilders care more about getting bigger than being healthy and safe. So if Ian wanted to pick Dennis, it maybe has something to do with bulking? Or maybe it has something to do with something else. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I'm not Ian. I can't tell you that. But I can say this. Last I looked, Ian Blair is ripped. Ian Blair is always shredded. Ian Blair in the off season is not fat. I have never seen a fat Ian Blair. I think they all agree with me. Really, actually, they all do. I know Patrick Moore does. You guys know Patrick Moore, top Olympia competitor, amazing physique. He's literally made posts. Not needing to get bulky in the Aussies. You don't need to get fat in the Aussies. And you watch his Instagram account. You do not need to force feed thousands of extra calories a day to gain muscle. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't think he was going to make me grow yeah. like I needed to. He felt Dennis James could coach him better than me. So what? What's wrong with that? Yeah, what's wrong with trying somebody new? He's in the Olympia and he's competed all these years. I'm just Coach Greg. I've never been in the Olympia. Automatically going to assume he knows everything more than Coach Greg. Why wouldn't he? And he'd already learned everything that I could teach him. I'd already shown him the ropes. He'd already won three overalls. So why not try someone new? Well, this is what I'll say about it. I watched the whole video he did about what he calls main gaining, which is basically growing without eating too much of a surplus no, of calories. Like three to 500 over surplus. Like which, is retar which is retarded, yeah. which is, it's just not. Fuad thinks you need much more than 500 calories over your surplus a day to grow muscle. You don't, but the research is so clear that you don't. And I don't care if you're natty. 
enhanced. You do not need more than 500 calories a day above maintenance to grow muscle. I don't care if it's 10 pounds of muscle, 20 pounds of muscle, whatever pounds of muscle doesn't require 500 extra calories a day. You cannot debate this. Well, you can debate it and be wrong if you're an idiot. Or you can just listen to the truth. You do not ever need more than 500 calories above maintenance to build muscle. Not even close to that. The reason the video bothers me is he structures the video and the graphic in a way that you're going to gain the same amount of muscle if you eat 300 calories over maintenance or if you eat 3,000 calories over maintenance. And it's going to be the same at the end of the day because you're going to have to lose all the fat. And when you lose the fat, you're going to lose all the muscle. The guy who bulks versus the guy who doesn't bulk and just maintains, let's call it 15% like Brandon Harding was. And I didn't want Brandon Harding to get any fatter. So he kept him at 15% and gained muscle. Versus the guy that bulks and gets a sloppy 25%. At the end of the day, the bulking guy's gonna gain a little bit more than the Brandon Harding at 15%. The guy that got fat and just ate so much, a little bit more. But at the end of the day, the fat so at 25%, he's gonna have to kind of lose that fat eventually to compete. While the person with 15%, they don't need to diet. They're watching my guy at 25% spend months getting to their level. That person is able to continue to main gain while the person at 25% is dieting. So if you bulk, you then have to diet longer than last time. So why bulk in the first place if you have to diet at all? Does that say anything about staying shredded? Maintain the lean off season. Gain a little bit of weight, for sure, make yourself feel good, have plenty of energy so you can train hard, but don't just slam and force in food, just, oh, I'm eating so much because I'm a bodybuilder. Because if I don't eat 17 chicken and rices a day, I only gain 0.1 pound of muscle, and I need 20 pounds of muscle today. No, you don't, it doesn't help. I mean, things like this are look good on paper, but until you've worked with a guy that's the size of any of us and tried to get them bigger, it just doesn't work like that. With guys like us, Ian and James and Fuad size, which are essentially the one in a millions. So unless you've worked with the biggest freakzillas in the world, it doesn't really apply to us. Okay, let's assume he's right, which he's not, but let's assume he's right, that it doesn't apply, that Ian Valer can't grow on a 500 calorie surplus a day. Like he can't, he needs a thousand. He needs to get huge. Does that apply to you? You watching the video right now, you, raise your hand if you're as big as Fuad, Ian, or James. Raise it high so I can see it. Now, I know this ain't wrong per room, and I can't actually see you, Greg, and Timmy, and Johnny. I can't see you. But I bet there weren't many hands raised because this information wouldn't even apply to 99.9% .9 of the world. So why am I going to make a video talking about a five or six freaks in the world that need to do this? Hi, this is video on how to gain muscle if you're already 6% fat and weigh 300 pounds. Who needs that video? Six people do. Well, that's a pretty useless video. I make videos for most people, normal people. 99.9% .9 of the world can gain information from what I'm saying. The point... 1%. Watch Fuad's channel. He used to have 20 times more followers than me. Now he doesn't. Why? It's not because I'm spewing lies. I'm not making up stuff. I'm telling you what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear, what you need to hear. But still, it's not actually true. If Fuad or Ian or James didn't eat more than 500 calories beyond maintenance, they would have just as muscle now as they do. They would. They would. 500 calories above maintenance, that's one pound of fat gained a week if it was above maintenance. If you're maintaining 280 pounds at whatever calorie intake you're at, and you eat 500 more calories a day, that's 3,500 calories surplus a week, that's about one pound of fat. And don't be pedantic with me and talk about the thermic effect of food and some of the calories, and, blah, 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 and I don't care, and your knee goes up. Whatever, it's about a pound of fat a week. So in 10 weeks, it's about... 10 pounds of fat. You don't need to gain 10 pounds more fat than you already have to put on muscle if you're already at 58% body fat. What does this information apply to? If you just finished a competition, like Ian or Fuad or these guys have done, and you're three, four, five, six percent body fat, you need to eat more. Of course you do. I'm not arguing with that. You need to go up in body weight. You need to get up to maybe 10%, maybe even 15, heaven forbid, maybe 15. Do you need to bulk at 25%? Do you know how stupid it is when I see people who are obese and they're like shoveling in more food saying, this is the hardest part of growing is eating more freaking food. 
No, it's not. The hardest part is training harder than last time. You're not going to gain 10 pounds of muscle in a year eating 300 calories over maintenance. I've gained more than 10 pounds of muscle in a year on a freaking deficit. It's called PDs. Then they're steroids. Yeah, I took them and I gained a ton of muscle while dieting even. I was getting bigger while dieting. I remember in 2012, the year I turned pro, I started my diet for the provincials at 206 pounds. Six weeks later, I was still 206 pounds. And I wasn't fat anymore. I was freaking getting leaner and the muscles were getting bigger. And then I won heavyweight and overall. Seriously, you believe Fuad's information over mine? Why? Because he's bigger? That's like saying if you're seven feet tall, you automatically know more about basketball than someone who's five foot five. Even if that person's freaking Spud Webb or some short basketball player that was in the NBA. You can be smart and be short and have less muscle. So just because Fuad has better genetics than me and is taller than me, doesn't mean he knows more about science of training than I do. He absolutely doesn't. I don't know any bodybuilder with any significant amount of mass that hasn't done a bulking phase. Do you know why he doesn't know anyone who hasn't done it? Because everyone does it anyway. I've bulked before and I gained no muscle from one year to the next. I was 154 pound lightweight and I bulked to 187, was fat. I had 34 inch pants from 30 inch pants to 34s, 187 pounds, trained harder than the last time the whole year, dieted down the next year, 154 pounds, an entire year of training, wasted. I was four feet, I was eating everything. I didn't know better, I was a younger guy. And I was younger and I didn't gain. What is it hating on me here? Don't write him and say, oh, you hated coach. No, he's just saying he doesn't agree with me. He doesn't believe me. But what I'm saying is he believes that because he believes strongly in what he believes. But I believe strongly in what I believe. And I'm right. 99.5% of the time. And Fuad, he might be right 99.4%, but I'm right more often than him. And this is not one of those times that I'm wrong. Bulking doesn't mean getting fat. It means overeating well over what your, your body's maintenance calories are. That means getting fat, Fuad. If you eat well over your maintenance, you're gonna get fat. What do you think you're gonna do? Oh, I eat way more than what my maintenance calories is. I just gained one pound, all muscle, because I eat well over what I need. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get fat. I'm just eating well over what my body eats. If you eat well above what you need, you're going to get fat. The only way you're not is if you do excessive amounts of cardio to burn off those calories. But should you do that? No, we don't need to do three, four, five hours of cardio a day to burn off the excessive amount of food we're eating. That doesn't really make sense now, does it? We're all kind of in agreement there. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I don't even, I don't know much about the guy, but, but from what I've seen, I agree entirely with what you two have said on the subject. If I had a podcast with Ian and James on my podcast, and we talked about calorie deficit and surpluses and building muscle and deficits and surplus and how much to eat, they would all agree with every freaking thing I'd say. Any podcast you go on, everyone kind of agrees with the people on the panel. It's hard just to stand there and be like, no, I don't agree with that. Nope, nope, that none makes sense. Nope. They would go on my show and say, hey guys, you don't need to eat a freaking shit ton of calories to gain muscle, do you? Do you need to eat 3,000 calories above maintenance and eat so much calories and get fat to gain muscle? They say, well, no. And he even said three to 500 calories above maintenance is, and if, uh, no, you need way more. So listen, Ian actually agrees with me more than Ford. If you actually watch the video, watch it two or three more times and see, does Ian think he need thousands of calories of surplus to build muscle? Or does he think that three to 500 will do it? Because if it's thousands, then he's agreeing that you need to get fat and sloppy. If you eat thousands of calories a day surplus, you will be fat and sloppy automatically. You can't eat and force feed and eat so much extra food to the point of you're just never wanting to eat and not get fat. You can't. Imagine if you couldn't. Oh, I found a new diet. All you do is eat as much food as you can and you only gain a little bit of weight and then you're great. I'll go for that diet in a heartbeat. I can eat pizza and shit all the time and get fat and force feed and I hold 12%. I go from 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day now to 7,000 calories a day. I want the diet. Give me the diet. Fuad's saying you can do it. I hope he doesn't actually think it, but you can't just eat as many calories as you want and not get fat. GregDoucette.com for coaching. Greg said by B Bro. Hope you learned something. Hope I shed some light. If you don't believe me, ask Ian. I'm just saying what I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't care. Whatever. Watch one of these two videos. And until next time, I am out.